Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Potcotter, and you're listening to Call Talk for November 16th, 2021. Today's topic is managing contact centers takes credibility. Hear how to build it best. If you're listening live, we invite you to be part of the show and ask questions. Here's how you do it. You can email me at calltalk at benchmarkportal.com. I want to remind everyone that all of our shows are archived and available to listen to at benchmarkportal.com any time of the day. And with that, I would like to introduce the host of the show, Bruce Belfiore. Thank you, Alan, and welcome back to Call Talk, everyone. You know, one of the things that came out of our Agent Voices survey is that uh, trustworthiness and credibility of their supervisors and managers is really important to contact center employees. And so we wanted to talk more about the whole topic of credibility, and we brought in an expert on the topic for you, uh, credibility expert Mitchell Levy. So I'd like to uh, welcome Mitchell to the show. <laughs> Bruce, great to be here. By the way, it becomes more credible when you pronounce the, the guest last name properly. So it's Mitchell Levy. Levy. Levy, yes, exactly. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I was just talking no. with another friend of mine who pronounces it the other way, and so I, so I apologize for that. Uh, but okay, uh, okay. in any event, okay, so r with recouped credibility, I'll move ahead here and uh, just introduce <laughs> you to our audience, although uh, many probably already know you. You know, uh, Mitchell is a two-times TEDx speaker and international best-selling author of over 60 books. And after interviewing 500 thought leaders on credibility, he created the Credibility Nation Community. Uh, he published a five-country international best-selling book, and uh, he has uh, provided strategic consulting uh, to many, many companies and has been the chairman of a, a NASDAQ-listed company. So uh, there's a lot of things that he can talk to us about with regard to credibility because he's seen it from so many different angles. And, um, Mitchell, you know, you've interviewed these 500 thought leaders on credibility. And I'd like you to tell us, you know, what you've learned that can be of interest to our audience, which, as you know, is made up mainly of contact center managers. You know, the, first of all, if, if you look at the – definition of credibility in the dictionary, you're, you're only going to hear one word, which was very interesting because it was very close to your opening. In the dictionary, what it says is credibility is the quality in which you're trusted. Now, that's partially true. As a matter of fact, what I'll say, that is one-third accurate. So in interviewing the 500 thought leaders, what came out is, first, it is really important that you're trusted. So if if, if you're actually uh, if you're on the tail end of a call center, contact center line, and you're listening, the first thing you have to make a decision on is do you trust that this person is going to give me the right answers? Now, there are two other elements that are really important. You've got to trust somebody first before you get to know them. And you'll need to get to know them a little bit better before you decide you can like them. And credibility is the quality in which we're trusted, known, and liked. And so it's really fascinating that way because we don't, we don't think this way. We don't work this way. We don't, we don't recognize the importance that if somebody's, if somebody's dialing into a contact center or a call center or you're getting a call uh, because it, you're trying to sell you something, I, I need to immediately decide if I trust the person that's doing the right thing. I need to get to know them enough that they, that they appear to care about me and I got to like them because if I don't like them, I don't like the company. And that, that sort of feeling transcends to the company itself. So no like and trust, or the way I like to say this, trust, no, and like, is an extremely important element in terms of understanding somebody and allowing somebody to be credible. Hmm. Yeah. No, that's uh, – you, you packed an awful lot in there. And certainly uh, I was just thinking about it, an interaction I had uh, this morning on the phone with a uh, company where – uh, somebody has fraudulently used my credit card, and so they informed me. And I've been in a couple of those situations where it's just been miserable in terms of getting somebody who can really help out. This person really helped out. So the trust part came as soon as she understood my situation 
and could see what was going on. So this is a situation in which a person who has a very nice demeanor, aided by the right technology, and uh, trained in the right processes, was able to bring across what you're talking about, this, this, this credibility. And in terms of getting to know her, you know, there was uh, just a couple of things said on the personal side which uh, helped on that. And then liked her. Well, I really liked the fact that she resolved the problem very quickly. So that's, uh, uh, yeah, and, and the whole idea of, you know, caring about me is, is very important. And if, if we take what you were saying, which is from the agent's point of view, right, uh, and bring that up to the manager's point of view, uh, the, the people that the manager needs to be uh, trusted, known, and liked by are the employees that report to that that manager, right, the supervisors and the, man, the uh, managers. Exactly. And, and yeah, can you, can you say a little bit more about that? Because it's one thing to try to do it really quickly on the telephone. That's a one big area. And then the other is to create it in a work relationship, which may be fraught these days with the fact that uh, people haven't met each other because they're actually dealing with each other uh, virtually. Well, I, I uh, sat on the board of an ethic company that, that actually set up uh, call centers um, for many of our clients. So this is an area that I absolutely know very well. And one of the problems is using today's modern modern approach of, of doing dialing for dollars and having metrics that are based on success of number of dials, how much time spoken, how much time not spoken, uh, close rates, all that, those numbers get in the way of the actual manager being being effective of managing their staff. Because what you what you really are looking for is is you're looking for you're looking for the, the, the manager to be able to build the trust, know and like in the people that work for them. So it's not just mm -hmm. about the numbers. It it's about the, the, the one of the things you said in your example is in terms of getting to know somebody, is you recognize they're a servant leader. Do you recognize mm -hmm. that they are there to help and serve others? And and so right. you want that, uh, if you're managing people, your job is to bring out the best of the person that you're working with. And by the way, because of COVID, because of what we've seen, that best is not necessarily just limited to the office. Because the person who's coming in to work, with them because they have no other outlets, whether it's a physical office or online, because everyone and or on their home loans, there there aren't the outlets we used to have. And so, you if you're managing a group of people who are who are really dialing all the time, we have to recognize as your management style needs to change. And what you need to do is allow yourself to be one of those people that will be not just trusted that you have the best interests of your employees at heart, but they actually get to know you and like you, and likability is important. And so mm -hmm. I'll, give you a, I'll give you an example of likability because this will be straightforward. One of the components, we have 10 components that are 10 skill sets that came out of the research. And on the likability side, there's two, and I'll just share one. One is sharing your stage. You know, the most simplest thing you can do is when people in your organization does a great job, give them credit for it. Highlight them. Talk to them to mm -hmm. your upper management. Uh, in your group meetings, highlight the types of ideas that are coming not from you but coming from your team. It's as simple mm -hmm. as I call it spreading cred dust. Cred dust mm -hmm. is this magic mm -hmm. that happens when you share somebody's ideas, thoughts, or actions. And so you want to be likable? Share somebody's cred dust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of simple. So I love the idea of cred dust and the fact that it's uh, something that can be shared with others, others in the organization, uh, others up the organization, so that uh, people will appreciate and feel appreciated um, as well. I mean, in, in the case of this person that I talked to this morning, I said, well, I hope you're going to be, after she did such a good job, I said, Tanisha, I hope that you're going to send me a uh, customer's survey so that I can give you a five out of five. 
<laughs> and mm. uh, she really picked up on that. I mean, she was, she said, yeah, they might send you one. So um, anyway, I, you know, the, the cred dust is all of us like to have a, a pat on the back. And well, when it and, comes and, from somebody in authority, then it means even more. Yes, and and I want to I want to add one more if if you don't mind. So there's there are two Wait. elements or two skill sets associated with being light, right? So so one is is essentially sharing your stage, spreading cred dust. Another is I call it just showing up by showing up. That means coming early, coming prepared, and coming to your heart. And most of the time, what happened when I see somebody who's managing a bunch of people. They'll set a meeting at, let's say, 2 in the afternoon, and they'll show up at 2.02 or 2.05, and they think that's okay. Well, uh-huh. what you're doing is disrespecting. It doesn't matter if the people work for you or they, they, they work above you or you work for them. You want, what you want to do is be able to show respect. So you want to come early to your meetings. You, you want to come prepared. You want to be ready to talk to the people you're talking with, and you want to actually come with your open heart. And it's really surprising how many people don't do that. Once again, you want to be a good manager of people, uh, particularly, you know, in in an area where a lot of times you don't necessarily see the uh, most amazing management skills in call centers because it is so metrics-driven and not focused on the human. You can do that by following just those two two skill sets. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, and I think in terms of being focused on the human, the most uh, uh, successful centers that we've seen actually are quite focused on the humans. Uh, they definitely uh, look at their metrics, follow the metrics, but they try to uh, have a balance and an understanding of everything. And, and the other thing is that most of our uh, audience is inbound customer service rather than outbound sales, which I think you've probably had more experience with, uh, Mitchell. And uh, so, therefore, uh, these are people who are selected for and self-selected for um, service. They are people who Mm. really enjoy uh, serving other people. And and actually, that's 85%, 90% of the industry is inbound customer service. And um, uh, particularly since the do not call lists got put in there, right? So uh, outbound really, really declined uh, a decade or two ago, well, a decade ago. And uh, so, yeah. But, so therefore, in that kind of a situation, the things that you were talking about, in ter- like servant leadership, is something that is so important up and down the organization. Maybe you could say a little bit more about that, because one of the things that uh, we have talked about uh, with our clients is that really, um, you know, the the leaders in an organization should be advocates, right, and therefore servants of as well, the people below them. And I have actually suggested that the name supervisor should be changed to agent advocate because if you're advocating for those agents who report to you, then you're advocating for their success, and their success is something, I mean, basically, I, I, maybe you can uh, tie this into cred dust, right? <laughs> because uh, I think there is a fair amount of overlap there, but you probably thought about it more than I have. And then that, in turn, makes the agents or the customer representatives um, advocates for callers. So they become caller advocates trying to solve their problems and they do it better because they've had a good they've had good role models. Anyway, I'll toss that back to you for your thoughts. Bruce, I love it. I I think what you just said is absolutely brilliant. And because uh, it 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 a lot of times it has to do with is what you're called, what's your name, what's your title, and, and a lot of people assume being credible or having authority is based on your title. And the answer is what you're saying, by the way, it shouldn't be based on the title supervisor. It should be based on the title. My job is to be an advocate for you. (laughs) My job as an agent advocate is to help all of the, all of the people who, who work with us. Notice I didn't say work for me. All the people that work Uh with us to allow them to be most effective. 
And so let me give you the mm-hmm. four skills associated with, with sort of that being known component. You know, one is just demonstrating a servant leadership, being able to be of service to others and wanting to do that. The second two is having the intent and the commitment to do the right thing. So if you're managing, if you're, if you're a agent advocate and you've got, you know, 30, 40 people that are working, working with you, you want to have the intent and commitment to allow them to be successful, to, for them to have a good life, for them to actually have a well-balanced activity, as well as not just doing a, a good job for the clients they work on, but also to be able to good, do good jobs for their family. And then the last one is, just, is having internal integrity. And so it really means that you say what you do and you do what you say, you know, and internally you represent, you show up in the way that people want to emulate and want to be part of. And, and I think so the, that was me expanding a little bit, Bruce, but I believe what you – you are so much on the right track in terms of changing the nature of the industry by focusing on what that role really is. Which really, mm-hmm. a, a, agent advocate and customer advocate, love those terms. And, you know, I'm thinking the the things that you just said, which which I love the uh, servant leadership, intent and commitment to do the right thing, uh, and having internal integrity. Um, let's just stop for a second and realize that those are essential ingredients of leadership, and. I remember one of my colleagues saying years ago, leadership means never having an off day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is a pretty tall order, right? I mean, being flawless in all of the areas that you were just talking about, Mitchell, is practically impossible. But being consistent. Yeah, I was say, that doesn't sound right way, to me, by the right? way. Yeah. Go ahead. What's yeah, that? I- uh, Bruce, that doesn't sound right to me, never having an off day. I, I would say, you know, we've talked about, I've given you actually so far six of the ten skill sets associated with credit, with credibility. Let me let me give you the one focused on trustworthiness. And, okay. then, and when I do that, I'll, I'll tell you how it how it affects me when I listen to never having an off day. On on uh, the trustworthy side, it's being it's being authentic. It is having external integrity, which is different than internal integrity. It is showing your vulnerability, and it is about being coachable. Okay, so let's 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 in looking at that. Let's talk about never having an off day. By definition, that's not possible. Now it depends right. on what you say, which is off. But you know, if you're a human, and you're credible, uh-huh. specifically from the perspective of being trustworthy. If you're having an off day, you could start off by saying, hey, I'm having an off day. In fact, mm-hmm. what if you're the agent of change with 30 people on you? You get, listen, guys, I'm having an off day. I don't think I can lead this meeting. Anyone else in the group want to lead it today? <laughs> like, yes. like, so simple, right? Yeah. It's so powerful. And, and you're showing you a little bit of vulnerability, and that's okay. Um, another thing that's interesting is I talked about coachability. What's interesting is what happened to somebody who in the organization, one of the agents, you know, the agents of change, one of them, um, or the advocates, you know, the, 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 the advocate, what, what if one of them actually came up with a great idea? It, not only was it a great idea, but it changed the way the, it changed the way the, you know, the customer advocate changed the way that the agent advocate was thinking. Mm-hmm. Well, first mm-hmm. of all, you could say, hey, listen, I'm coachable. I think your way is better than what I've been talking about. Why don't we think mm-hmm. about that? What does everyone think about that situation? Is that something we should do? Guess what? You would then, and then when you bring it up, upper level, you spread cred dust by saying, hey, one of my, one of the agents that work with me, one of our customer advocates, um, they had this idea. I think this is what we should be doing from here on in. You're spreading cred dust, but you're also demonstrating from a trustworthy perspective that you're coachable, mm-hmm. right? right? And so I, I think if you listen to how I'm speaking now, all of what I'm talking about is what most people would call common sense. It's kind of the the grandmother principles. 
It's what we were taught mm-hmm. when we were young and we've elected to ignore when we've gone into business. We need to bring that back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, actually, a lot of the things that you talked about, and I'm an assistant scoutmaster, right, at the local troop, and you look at the scout law. I mean, a lot of it's right in there that you're talking about. Uh, same thing for uh, the rotary principles. Uh, a lot of those things are there. So they are so the grandmother principles, but they're so important, and they need to be transferred from, um, you know, wherever we learn them to the day-to-day practices. Uh, and that's really the magic when you're able to do that. That's uh, and, and, and satisfying. Uh, Mitchell, one of the things also that you've you've talked about is clarity, uh, and clarity in conjunction with credibility. Could you just talk about that for a minute? Because I think our audience would really like to hear your thoughts on that. You know, one of the shocking things for me that came out of interviewing 500 thought leaders is that 98% of those people I interviewed could not articulate in 10 words or less their purpose. They could not articulate, and I'll say it in another way, it's, 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 as I called it, the CPOP, their customer point of pain. So they weren't able to, in 10 words or less, talk about who they, who they served and the pain point they'd addressed. And so mm-hmm. what I ended up doing is building a framework, I call it CPOP, customer point of pain or a customer point of pleasure. And that CPOP, that is a way in which one can address their purpose and say it in 10 words or less. And, mm-hmm. you know, the, the most amazing thing, the, the role of, of any manager, you know, once again, you call it a supervisor, we'll just call it, uh, you know, a, a advocate, you know, mm-hmm. a, a, a uh, what did you call it again? Was it a change advocate? No, it was a, no, I, I said uh, it was Cust- a uh, customer advocate. A, a customer advocate for, uh, that would be at the agent level. In other words, the agent is a customer advocate, and the person yeah. that the agent reports to, which is a, now called the supervisor, I was saying should be the AA or the agent advocate. So the agent advocate's job is to work with customer advocates to allow them all to have their own purpose. Now. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen when you focus on that is you want that purpose. You want that to be surrounding around the job they're doing today. By the way, mm-hmm. if their purpose is not, does not surround around the job, it's time to actually have them move on or ask them to move on to something else. This is also true mm-hmm. for the agent advocate, right? And, right? and so what clarity is, is to be able to clearly articulate. When you get on the phone, let's say, Bruce, you, you, you talked this morning, you, you had a credit card issue, you called somebody else up, you knew immediately that this person, their purpose was to, make, to, to, to satisfy a problem you were going through. Right? You knew that immediately. It just it emanated from the call, from, from get-go. Well, mm-hmm. you want that. You want all of the customers of your, your client's customers you want all of them to to recognize that they have the same experience. And how do you do that? Well, your your job is to have is to allow your people to have clarity on who they are and how they serve. To allow them to have clarity on what they're doing matters and why it matters. And and so to be able to articulate this is not your 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 value statement, your mission statement or any of that. It simply comes down to each one of the customer advocates, and it's probably very similar, but for them to have their own CPOP, to have their own purpose statement, so that every morning when they wake up and they, they pick up those phones, they are executing on their purpose. And that, uh-huh. that simple level of clarity will allow those people, and by the way, you then reinforce it with the appropriate metrics, Right, and so you might change the just like you change the name of the titles, you might change the name of the metrics in such a way that they're seen as having to reinforce the purpose of the individuals who are actually talking directly with your customers. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, these uh, very good concepts, and uh, we uh, do talk to clients often about the fact that you need to. Uh, have clarity in your mission statement. You have to have clarity in your processes. You have to have clarity in your communications. Uh, you have to have c- clarity in your expectations. All those things are 
Very important. They really do fit in, I think, hand in glove with the things that you're talking about with credibility. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I think it's so interesting what you've been doing, um, Bruce, unlike, you know, there are many people who are, who do different things in your industries. And, and when you, when you get the opportunity to see multiple companies doing this, the, the similar stuff across the board, you get opportunities to find best practices. And, mm -hmm. and when you look at best practices, what, what ultimately uh, Google's to the top, what it ultimately surfaces is the fact that if you treat everyone in, who's in this supply chain, if you treat everyone as a human with respect, the types of things that you learned as a Boy Scout or as a Rotary Club or as your grandmother taught you, all that I'd label under the name credibility. And it's the opportunity to be more humane. As a matter of fact, what I'll mention is I do have a, based on the research, I actually did a TEDx talk. And the TEDx talk is titled, We Are Losing Our Humanity, and I'm Tired of Watching It Happen. And, and my, my preposition is very simple. If you did nothing more than treated those people around you credibly, we would be much more humane to each other. And so uh, this conversation is reinforced specifically in your vertical that that's, this makes so much sense and something that's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things actually we just came out with for um, customer service week was a video uh, which was focused on the impact that you as a contact center professional can have on other people. Uh, it's available on Google, and if you look up, uh, look up Benchmark Portal, look up Customer Service Week. Uh, Alan, if there's something else that they should also uh, look into, you know, add to their their search, uh, please uh, throw that in as well. And it's uh, basically something that should make every contact center manager uh, a professional at any level feel good about what they do, because when a good job is done when they have the qualities, that, Mitchell, that you've been talking about, and they bring them to the job and they actually execute on them, uh, they do have a really positive impact on people's lives. And uh, we all know what it's like to have a, a, a really good interaction that leaves us smiling at the end, and we also know what it's like to have a bad customer contact interaction that leaves us frustrated and upset. And when we do a good job, we actually make a big difference in people's lives, just like uh, Kanisha did this morning uh, with me. So this is, uh, you know, something that, uh, you know, I think is oftentimes overlooked in our industry. The positive impact that we have on human beings and on society as a whole, and this is so clearly true for centers that are in the healthcare area, that are in emergency services, that are in uh, nonprofits. Uh, you know, we have helped the centers with, who deal with breast cancer survivors, who deal with mental health issues. There are so many uh, customer contact functions uh, around the world and in, in, in the United States. But this is also true if you're in an insurance company, for instance, and you're dealing with life insurance and you have people who call in and uh, have to report that a loved one has, has passed away. How you handle that call can make a huge difference in the life of the person on the other end. So, you know, these are, these are components, the, the, the things that you were talking about in terms of, uh, you know, servant leadership, but uh, also the trusted, known, liked. Uh, these are things that can be done every day by the people on the front line and need to be sort of coached, as you said, and reinforced by the uh, managers who uh, they report to. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, I, I, I love it. And, and I would say uh, for you or Alan, um, I would definitely put the link to the video you mentioned in, in the show notes. And, uh, mm -hmm. and send me a copy. I'd love to look at it. I just, just started looking at you YouTube channel as a result of you saying that. And, Dude, you have a lot of really cool short videos on your YouTube channel. And so I'm looking forward yep. to uh, our continued conversation because I think my 
my audience would want to see some of them. Okay, very good. No, that, that would be great. And um, you know, we're uh, we're we're sort of at the we're at the end of our half hour, unfortunately. So we're going to have to leave it there. But uh, you know, I think all of the things that you were talking about, including you know, uh, understanding the importance of this to yourself, uh, to others, uh, being able to show your vulnerability. For instance, in my case. I'm not always the best with last names. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> on, the other, <laughs> on the other hand, with a name like Belfiore, with all those, uh, with you know, the uh, diphthongs in there, I have had my last name mispronounced so many times I can't even I can't even tell you. But um, you know, all of these things really come together, make people more human, make them more uh, likable. A known, trusted, all of those things. So, uh, mm. you know, what I'd like to do is to thank you so much and give you an opportunity for any last thoughts, Mitchell, before we uh, wrap up this session. No, no Bruce, this is great. I, I'm, you know, I was on your show before, and I wasn't the yep. person I am now um, in terms of understanding what we need to do. And so I'll just say, if you're listening to this, we need to bring back our humanity. We need to be better in interacting with others. And if you're managing a number of people that you're, that you're working with, you have such a beautiful opportunity to be more humane for them. And you know what? That's going to that's gonna then move over to them and the customers you're interacting with. So take a look at the TED Talk um, that I created. Uh, we'd love to see you in Credibility Nation. Um, because we're going to feature some of Bruce's stuff there because it makes a whole lot of sense that you just – it's not rocket science here. I mean, it's not, not about the numbers. At the end of the day, if you treat your customers' customers as humans, it's going to come back and everyone will benefit. Absolutely. Okay. Great words to finish on. Thank you so much. Uh, Mitchell, and with that, I'll turn things over to Alan Potcotter uh, to close things up. But a really great session, Mitchell. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Bruce. Uh, amazing to be here. Thanks again to Mitchell and to Bruce for your insightful discussion on today's show. Be sure to join us next month for another great show or look at our huge selection of archived hot topics for benchmarkportal.com. Then click on Call Talk where you'll find over 12 seasons of this show. From all of us at Benchmark Portal, keep those headsets steady and your fingers ready. This is Alan Potter signing out. Have a great day. <laughs>